Okay, so let's uh, do sexually transmitted diseases. I put this in with the uh, male reproductive system because that was a fairly short uh, section with, uh, with our course. Um, so I put it in there, but do understand obviously sexually transmitted diseases deals with the female and male reproductive system. Okay. Um, a lot of these pictures uh, that I'm going to show now um, is very graphic. Um, I would love to have taught this course, or, or let's say uh, this particular section, and teach it to high school kids because I think we have a big, big problem with that um, in uh, all the high school students around the uh, around our country. Um, but showing them that and just making them smart because really the only way to um, uh, to protect ourselves and to eliminate HIV and other sexual transmitted diseases is, is education, so if I could show them that. Um, but you're going to see there's a lot of graphic pictures on here, um, just giving you a little um, uh, warning on that. Uh, and if I was going to do it for high school students, I definitely would do it the same way. And the problem is, as I do that, I hope I don't scare them too much that they'll never have one have sex ever again, and you'll never be a grandparent, so to say, right? So um, it's, it's just to educate people, just to be smart about it, know your partner, uh, so that none of these things uh, happen, okay? So uh, let's go talk with, then uh, uh, this is how I'm going to be breaking it up, is um, we have uh, bacteria, and bacteria, I'm going to deal with syphilis, chlamydia, and gonorrhea. I'm only going to pick, there's a lot of different sexual transmitted diseases out there. I'm going to hit, I'm going to only hit the ones that are, um, uh, most prevalent here, okay? So I'm going to do syphilis, chlamydia, and gonorrhea. Then with viruses, uh, the hemopathoma virus, we talked a little bit about that already because that also causes which cancer? Yes, cervical cancer, and in some cases, even penile cancer in the penis itself. Uh, but we're going to also deal with the other part, the more predominant thing that HPV causes, and we see a lot more of, is venereal wards, we call condyloma acuminata. But we'll get into that. Uh, herpes, I'm sure most of you have heard about, and of course HIV. Now with the HIV, I'm really not going to talk much about it, only because we dealt with that uh, in a big uh, uh, section when we did the immune disorders. So um, you still need to know it for the final exam. Um, I'm going to mention a few things about it in here, but uh, again, we talked about that, so I'm not going to really um, go into that. And then there's also a parasite, yeah, even a parasite, not a worm, but it's more of a protozoa, uh, trichomonas. Uh, but that's also, a, uh, also uh, being able to contract it through um, sexual transmission. So these are the, um, the, the three groups that we'll deal with, bacteria, viruses, and uh, parasites. Okay. So let's give you a little bit of background here. Um, why I would want to do this for the high school students. Uh, this was a study that was done back in 2008 and actually is still holding water uh, to this day. This is uh, one of our first, uh, well it is the first study to show high sexually transmitted uh, disease rates that we're seeing in high school students. Um, and these are just, I wouldn't ask you about the percentages on here, I just want you to see the, the trend that happens. Um, that we're seeing girls and the ones that we're testing, this is in Chicago, of the girls that between 14 and 19 years old, overall prevalence is 20, 26%, but we're actually like, we're seeing that almost doubling now. Um, we see it more in the black race and the white race and the Mexican Americans. But I don't find that being um, a racial issue. I think what we have problems with is sexually transmitted diseases and for teen pregnancy is a teen issue, and that's what we got to look at. It. Okay, this is just something they put together. And also the infections that were tested on them over here were uh, these over here. And we uh, saw that there was a growing uh, percentage that are, were happening. So um, <clears throat> I want to just point out over here that we have about 20 million um, new cases of infection each year. And this was uh, a thing that was done by the CDC in 2012. Um, so we got 20 million new cases a year that occur, okay? Um, and the big thing over here that we see proportion of new infections that are people between 15 and 24, the key thing over here is 50%. 50% is happening in the teenager uh, years and up in the 
college years also. So right where you are. So you got to be educated. What I showed the, the picture before was, um, let me just go back to that. The picture before was saying from 14 and 19 is 20, 26%. So you're looking at, if you extend that to about 20, uh, 24 years old, as this one's coming over here, then we're getting, they're doubling that to 50%. So we're definitely seeing it less than, um, probably, um, uh, you know, um, multiple partners, it's probably one of the biggest uh, contributing factors over there. You know how it was in high school. You're with um, um, somebody for like two weeks and you break up and you think your heart is like broken up because of that. I mean, it's just two weeks and then they go to someone else or they go to someone else, whether it's a boy or a girl, whichever. Um, so we're seeing a lot more of that. Uh, hopefully uh, what happens is after uh, 24, 25 years old, you get a little bit mature about things and you realize what you want. So we're looking at a 10-year uh, age group from 14 to, to 24. That's 50%. That's a pretty high number in such a very restricted age group. Okay. I also want to mention here new cases. Uh, so these are estimated new cases. We're looking at over here, most common sexually transmitted disease is HPV. We talked about that when we dealt with the cervical cancer and stuff. But keep in mind, it also, most cases, uh, it causes venereal warts. Okay, um, uh, warts that happen in the sexual area, the anal area. Um, and keep in mind, HPV also causes warts on your skin and stuff. There's about 80 different strains of HPV. Um, and I think, uh, I think it comes down to about four strains, four to six strains actually causes cancer. So um, that's what's happening with that. Uh, so this is the most uh, commonly sexually transmitted disease is HPV. Uh, chlamydia over here is the number one bacterial sexually transmitted disease. You should know that uh, it's growing on that, so I need you to, to uh, understand what you will. Okay? But all these other ones we'll mention. Hey, they're also thrown in um, hepatitis B um, virus that we talked about when we did the GI system, the GI disorders, um, because you can't get that sexually also. So they're kind of now grouping the uh, hepatitis B virus, the HBV, uh, with uh, sexually transmitted diseases also. So keep that in mind. That wasn't really thrown in there uh, with statistics uh, 10 years ago, but now they're starting to put that in there. Okay? And all the other ones we'll, we'll mention about. All right. So uh, before we get into each one of these, I just want to just uh, mention about the prevention of sexually transmitted diseases. Uh, abstinence. I mean, that's a big one, right? So abstinence. Um, sexually transmitted diseases can only be, attract can, can be contracted by sexual contact. Now keep in mind, uh, HIV, as we talked about, can also be um, uh, contracted through blood, okay? There is a few sexually transmitted diseases that we will talk about where the fetus or the newborn baby or the delivering babies with a baby going through the birth canal, the vaginal canal, they can also get it through this. So they can get sexually transmitted diseases by these ways too, also in breastfeeding. Okay? So we'll mention them as we go along over here. But when we talk about a sexually transmitted disease, as the name implies, it can, it, it, will be transmitted sexually, no question about that. It's just these other, uh, other um, uh, exceptions over here, not really exceptions, in additions, I guess, uh, other ways that you can get it, okay? Condoms, of course. Uh, there's really two types of condoms on there. Um, the latex versus the lambskin. Latex is the one that they actually have proven that it has a much better protection than lambskin. Uh, I don't know if you know much about these, but the reason why we have the two types over here, uh, latex has um, a thicker, um, a thick, thicker material, whereas lambskin uh, has a thinner material. So the guy and the woman, for that matter, uh, feels though um, the, the sensitivity in the penis actually is um, greater with lambskin. The only thing is, it's thinner, so certain bacteria, certain sexually transmitted infections can pass right through there. So just give me a heads up, the latex is the better one. We've got to talk about, you know, uh, if you're monogamous, right? you got to know your partner. I mean, you yourself know if you're being, if you're cheating or not, right? 
So you're the one that knows that it can only protect yourself. I'm only speaking with myself, I'm true to myself, and that's it. You know, the other partner you have, whether man or woman, um, you, you know that he or she is uh, truly true to you. So you really need to know your partner, okay? Even though you may think you're in a monogamous relationship, um, you may not, okay? So we got to uh, look at that too. Special positions, uh, there has been some talk about this, but they're all myths, okay? There is no correlation to a certain sexual position it means that you're going to get HIV or you're going to get um, uh, uh, any of the bacteria like syphilis and stuff. It doesn't matter. Sex is sex. Um, there is no position. There's no correlation. Also, um, we've heard this too, urinating after you have intercourse. Um, that is going to help you uh, to prevent... Um, your urinary tract infection, because the bacteria can, if, after having intercourse, if there's more bacteria in the vagina, that bacteria can go uh, into the urethra and go into your bladder and set up camp and cause cystitis, or urinary, uh, which is a um, urinary bladder infection, which if you make it long standing, it could ascend through the ureters and go into the kidney and whatnot. So it does, um, if you urinate afterwards, you flush out your urethra so that if there's any bacteria there, it's not there anymore. So it does help uh, having uh, urinating after intercourse to prevent UTIs, but not there's no correlation to prevent sexually transmitted diseases. So again, these are a list of different things. I just wanted to make notes and bullets about prevention of sexually transmitted diseases. Okay. All right, so let's start talking about, um, the, I have three bacteria, three viruses, and we have um, uh, one parasite. So let's start talking about the bacteria one. Uh, syphilis is one, all right? Um, so this is a, a bacteria, uh, Chaponium pallidum is the uh, name of this uh, critter. Uh, the way you can get syphilis is sexual contact, of course. Also, um, this one, now usually bacteria are too big to cross the placenta barrier. In other words, if mom has it, it's very difficult for the baby to get it through the placenta. However, this bacteria is small enough where it can creep up and go through the placenta. So we have what we call perinatal transmission. During the, um, the baby inside the mother's womb, if mom has syphilis, or at least has this bacteria in her blood, it can get to the baby through the placenta barrier. So I do want you to know that, okay? Um, if it goes to the baby, especially during a time when embryo, uh, embryogenesis occurs, where the organs are all forming, um, it will affect it. In other words, if the heart is going like this, growing a certain way, but now syphilis comes in, it starts to grow a different way. And we do see that this uh, can cause miscarriages, um, it can cause stillbirths, uh, meaning that after 20 weeks, the baby dies because of the way that things are growing, okay? Sometimes we even see death of the baby, the newborn, shortly after birth uh, because the heart or the lungs were affected and the, um, the baby can't breathe on its own, okay? So there's a lot of things that can happen with that. If it does go to the baby, we then call it congenital syphilis. And it does a lot of uh, horrible facial features that are very classic about this, and I'll show you those too. Okay? So let's talk about uh, syphilis. Syphilis in the adult, per se. Um, there's three phases, or three stages, and it's all contagious during any one of these, uh, these stages. Um, the last phase, it's not so um, uh, contagious, but it is to a point. Second stage is the most... Um, uh, crucial when being contagious, though. So there's three stages. Primary syphilis. This happens after three weeks of exposure of having intercourse with someone who's got syphilis. Okay, um, and what happens is about three weeks later, something occurs on the penis or the vagina, and it's called a chancre. A chancre is a painless ulcer, and it usually lasts for about three to six weeks. I'll show you pictures of this. Now, I do want to make note of this. It's easier to see this stuff on men than you see this on women. 
Unfortunately, in women, a lot of times, it can be on the vulva, on the outside, and you can see that. But many, many times, it's inside on the vagina, and you'll always miss it. So they have to do a thorough exam on someone, okay? Um, because of this, you ladies got to be, you got to really know your partner, okay? Um, take a look at your guy's penis, okay? I know it's funny and all, but, um, and he'll probably be very, um, you know, uh, very uh, accommodating to um, for you to spend an extra amount of time looking or doing whatever to the penis, but make sure you look at the penis, okay? Um, a shankar looks like a painless ulcer, so it's an ulcer, and it looks pretty nasty. There's something there, but let's look. Let's just take a look at what's going on here. Women don't know if they have it or not, most cases, because it's in the vagina. So that's what's bad about that. And I have to uh, be very um, protective of my field of gynecology because this is where I usually see this kind of stuff because the woman has no idea that she got this from a man or whatnot. Now, let's look at this scenario really quickly and then we'll move on. Here's a man that has a shankar. Whether you know, well, let's say you don't know about it. He knows about it because he sees it there, but he doesn't feel any pain. It's just like, oh, maybe I bumped into something. Well, I bumped into something. But maybe something has happened, but you know what? It goes away in three to six weeks. So here's what will happen. One or two scenarios will happen. He may see something on his penis, and he may just say, well, it doesn't hurt, so I'm not going to go get help. That's one scenario, and that's a more common scenario because he's known he knows that he's been fooling around that's what i'm saying okay so he doesn't want to make it obvious to his girlfriend or wife for that matter the other scenario is that he may set up an appointment because he's a little bit concerned so he sets up an appointment we'll see him in a week but maybe this goes away maybe he's at the end of it and it goes away and then he doesn't see the doctor goes, eh, I don't need to see the doctor because it went away. So he cancels the appointment or just doesn't show. I guess the third case was that he keeps the appointment, they see what it is, they treat, because this thing is really easy to treat. All you need is antibiotics, boom, it's done. Okay? The problem is, if he gets, if he gets um, treated for it, he's got to have his partner treated also. If I treat her, she has to go treat him. Does that make sense? Or that, that way. Um, otherwise, she's just going to get it right back. And I know what most women will say, believe me, I've seen this. Oh my God, I got this uh, syphilis or I got uh, a chlamydia. Uh, I don't care. Let, you know, I'm not going to have my, my boyfriend get a check because you know, I want it to fall off. You know, that kind of thing. But we all know that there's makeup, sex, and things like you know, that whole thing. So if I treat her, she's good. But if she goes right back to him, She's going to get it right back. There's, it's just kind of like, you know, you've got a cup over here and a hole in the bottom. If you pour water into the cup, it's coming right out. What's the use of you giving her the medication? Um, so what I used to do was I give, um, I give her the medication and I double the dose so that she would get it to her boyfriend. A lot of times I stopped doing that because a lot of times she wouldn't even give it to him. So my whole thing is, well, just here, if you break up with him and stuff, just be very smart about that, be very mature, and say, look, we broke up, um, but I just want to let you know I got syphilis from you. Here's a doctor's appointment. My suggestion is to go and get it checked, but we're done. Something like that, all right? Just to be mature about it. Because she, he's just going to spread it to someone else. So we've got to stop this whole thing. So again, a Shankar is a painless ulcer. Okay, keep that in mind. And it usually lasts for about three to six weeks. Um, secondary syphilis. Now we're talking about three months to two years later. So if this person didn't get treated, look at this, it would have been nice. He got treated over here. She, I don't want to um, uh, pick sides on here. He or she needs to get treated. If they get treated over here, you won't have to worry about secondary syphilis, let alone this part over here. Okay? So, we're talking about someone who didn't get treated over here. After about three to two years later, they will go into something called se um, secondary syphilis. Secondary syphilis, this is where the uh, bacteria is now free-floating throughout the blood. Okay? 
And what happens here is they get a pretty classic rash on the palms of their hands and also the soles of their feet, okay? A lot of times inside the mouth, you'll see some ulcers there, certain uh, lesions. We call these all lesions, right? A lesion is any type of um, abnormality to a body organ. In this case, there's some kind of abnormality to the skin. That's what a lesion is, okay? Um, now, the rash lesions uh, occur on the palms, the soles, and mucous membranes of the mouth. It doesn't have to be all three at the same time. Um, it can uh, come and go over two years. That's the whole thing. You'll see the rash on the, on the palms, they go away. You got the rash on the mouth, that goes away. You got the rash on the feet, goes away, that kind of thing. But it can go on and off for about two years. Again, this is, uh, this is just a rash. It's not itchy. It's just uh, something you see cosmetically. If it's on the soles of the feet, unfortunately, you don't see it. It's on the soles of your feet. The only time you will see ladies need to look at your mouth when you look at the bottom of your feet, let alone your mouth. So, um, again, you ladies need to look at your man about this. And also, you see this with, uh, with women also. So that's what happens with secondary syphilis. Okay? And this is also very treatable here. But I do want to mention that it is the most contagious during the secondary syphilis phase. Okay. All three phases is contagious, but it's mostly contagious during this time when you're not even at... Now, this is usually when they get treated because they say, what the heck's going on with their, with their, with their hands over here? It looks weird, or their feet. Because they don't associate that with a sexually transmitted disease, let alone this could be, let's say, two years later, so you don't remember what happened two years ago. But the thing is, they don't associate this with uh, sex, right? So this is where they put the two together, and lo and behold, the doctor talks to the couple and says, well, you've got syphilis, and the wife is like, oh my God, how could you? So that's what I'm saying. So um, this is usually where we uh, catch a lot of them because um, they don't, the, the patients don't associate with sex. Um, they just notice that there's some kind of rash on there. Okay? Now, if it doesn't get treated during secondary syphilis time, then it can, not all the time, it can go into something we call tertiary syphilis. This happens decades later. It could be 10 years, it could be 50 years, okay? Um, so it's rarely seen, but when it does, it can become fatal, okay? Um, this is where you're not going to be treated after the primary and second stage um, uh, syphilis. And what happens is it goes, this bacteria starts go, growing into certain organs and starts killing uh, a lot of the, uh, uh, the tissue in there and causing necrosis and causing a lot of scarring that happens, we call that fibrosis. It damages the brain, the eyes, the nerves, so all the nervous system can get messed up and that will also deal with things like they start getting confused, right? It'll cause problems with the liver, cardiovascular system, okay? Um, this is like a pretty, I guess a, a classic case that you can see this, um, here you are, um, you know, grandma's 70 years old, and she's getting very, very confused about things. And a lot of people say that's senility. Maybe it's, uh, uh, maybe it's, it's Alzheimer's disease, something like that. But um, when they do a blood test, and we do a, what we call an RPR, or VDRL, um, it comes back positive, and then we do a, another test to confirm that this was syphilis, and that's what that is. Unfortunately, at this stage over here, it's not treatable. You just have to, well, it's treatable to whatever we can do with it. The, the damage is already done. Um, you can't really fix that, per se. There's scarring there, you can't remove the scarring and put new tissue there. So, um, so that's what happens over here. You get these what we call granulomas or gummas is also another word for it. Um, we also talked about, when we did the cardiovascular system, we also talked about dissecting aortic uh, aneurysms where you start dissecting the, the aorta and separating it, and it can burst. Um, and they have this um, area over here, so this is like that ripping sensation of the feeling, and they have instant death because of that. Uh, but syphilis will cause that too. If it affects uh, the brain, the eyes, or the nerves, then we just refer to it as neurosyphilis, but neurosyphilis is a type of tertiary syphilis. Okay? So that's what happens with those. All right? So, diagnostic tests, um, well, <clears throat> what we do is that we will do um, a pla uh, what we call a rapid plasma reagent, um, reagent RPR. Um, if that becomes positive, we could also do a different one called Venereal Disease Research Laboratory, which is 
DDRL. So you'll see these more common. If they have this, uh, then it's a screening test to see if they have um, uh, syphilis. The um, if this is this is a, a you have a lot of false negatives on here. Um, so what they do is to make sure that uh, they have a good. They'll have another test to do, um, but that's it's a blood test that they will test test for um, syphilis. Okay, because there are other um, uh, diseases that these are positive for, right? So it's a screening test. Season, first stage or second stage, you just give penicillin. Boom! It's a different kind of dosage than just taken by the by mouth and stuff. So I don't want you to think that well, if I'm getting penicillin because of another uh, disease, um, then we're going to um, you know. That I have to, if I have syphilis, then this will cover too. It's a different dosage and it's a different regimen, but I'm just saying that it's easy to fix by just giving uh, antibiotics. Okay, you just don't want it to go into a uh, tertiary stage. Okay, so let's look at some of these pictures. Again, these will be graphic, so I um, just want to let you know about them. So this is what a Shankar is. All right, here obviously on the penis, you'll see this ulcer over here. Okay. Um, you can also see it on here, an ulcer on the penis, and also if it's outside on the vulva of the female, you'll see something like that. Okay. Again, as much as it looks gruesome over here, it's painless. Okay. This is stage one syphilis. So. Kind of weird, but you know, a guy who sees this on him doesn't feel any pain, he won't get himself checked. I don't know, I would get myself checked, you know, something like that. I mean, there's something, you know, I don't want it to fall off kind of thing. So, um, I just want to let you know that's what it kind of looks like. Um, make sure when you, um, when you do look at your partner, um, you know, look when there's light, have a candlelight or something, make it romantic if you're doing that, but you're doing your own investigation while you're, you're at the moment over there. But you better make sure that you still that you got to protect yourself. Okay, so that's primary syphilis. This is secondary syphilis. Okay, this is where I was talking about the rash that happens on your hands or your palms of your hands or soles of the feet. This is kind of typical that you see on there. Um, and like I said, that's usually what gets them to see the doctor in, in most cases uh, because they don't associate this with um, with sex, multiple partners or whatnot. Okay, so that's where we usually catch it. what it kind of looks like. Um, and also, when you look inside the mouth, you might have some ulcers here um, and elsewhere. Okay? So, so uh, that's just what they kind of look like. Tertiary syphilis, um, I, these are gummas. Uh, I don't have a good picture. I couldn't find really a good picture with inside, let's say, the brain or inside the um, the heart or liver and whatnot, but if you could picture that here it is. Uh, this is also syphilis. It's happening to the, to the extremities. So here you have like the scarring area that occurs in, in this case, the the arm. If you could visualize that actually happening in the um, uh, in the uh, in, in the heart and other areas, then that's what the, that's what it would look like. Uh, so that's uh, gummas or there's um, uh, the scarring that's happening here. Okay. Now, uh, next picture. This is um, congenital syphilis. Okay. Uh, again, a lot of cases in congenital syphilis, it can end up in uh, miscarriages, stillborns, or death shortly after uh, birth. Uh, <coughs> a lot of times we see these. Uh, you see, it's, it's pretty typical facies that you're seeing over here. Um, you can see the nose, it's called a saddle nose, it kind of creates that. Do we see that often in America? No. The reason why is because we check every woman who's pregnant, at least that comes into the hospital during her prenatal care, we check for syphilis, if they have it or not. So um, if they do, then we actually will treat it. You know what I'm saying? Before, hopefully, before it goes to the uh, to the baby. That's the problem: is the the window that happens um, 
as we talked about, uh, the, the window where organogenesis or embryogenesis occurs, when the organs occur, is anywhere from um, five weeks to nine weeks, right? So that's the whole thing, is during that time. And um, that's where our biggest concern is, is when the organs are actually forming, all right? Um, actually, yeah. So, yeah, that's going to happen. So, um, so up to nine weeks or so. And if the mother comes to us when she has syphilis and she comes to us late in pregnancy, let's say she's 34 weeks, I mean, the damage has already been done. So we are just aware of it and um, just hope for the best kind of thing. Okay, we'll still treat it, but whatever is damaged to the baby through the organs being developed, that's what happens. Okay, um, and this is just another picture of this. Uh, again, we don't see this much in America. Um, third world countries, because they don't get all the antibiotics, you see a lot more of it in third world countries. So this is showing that too. Okay, you see that saddle nose that happens. We also see, and you don't see this obviously when the baby's born, but in the teeth. If we know the congenital syphilis is there and they start growing teeth, they get these notches that happen in the teeth. We call this Hutchinson's teeth. Okay, and these are little notches that happen. Okay, uh, there's another one too. All right. You have these little notches happening in the teeth. All right. Um, the question is about syphilis. 